the, from the CP angle through the internal acoustic canal, it reaches up to the fundus. What is here actually? Here comes your cochlea. Right? Your semicircular canal, superior, posterior and the lateral semicircular canal. And here is the vestibule. So, this is the fundus. So, from the fundus, this facial nerve along with the nervous intermediates reaches into another, another canal, that is the facial canal. From the fundus of the internal acoustic canal, the facial nerve proper along with the nervous intermediates goes into a facial canal. And facial nerve is the nerve which has got the longest journey through a bony canal. Okay. So, it reaches the Facial canal. This is a facial canal. And this facial canal reaches the where it uh, reaches. This is a medial wall. Which wall of me, uh, middle ear? Medial wall of middle ear. Where in the middle, uh, medial wall? Anterior, posterior, superior, inferior. So it reaches the andro superior. So the facial now in the facial canal reaches the andro superior wall of the medial wall of middle ear. The fundus of the internal auditory canal, the 8th nerve leaves the company of the 7th nerve. Vestibular cochlear nerve leaves the company of the facial nerve and the facial nerve proper along with the nervous intermediates enters into the facial canal. Okay. <coughs> and the nervous intermediates goes along with the facial nerve. This part is called the labyrinthine segment. Around 4 mm there is a labyrinthine segment. So at the labyrinthine segment. At that junction there is a physiological bottleneck of fish. And this part is very much vulnerable to uh, lesions or uh, inflammations. Which causes the nerve palsy. So that you have to remember. And that is also important in the pathophysiology of Bell's palsy. Okay. And on reaching the, uh, after this, I'll uh, tell you the fate of each component, motor as well as the sensory root separately. So on reaching the uh, medial wall of the middle ear, what happened to the facial canal? This facial canal turns backwards. Okay. So it forms a acute angle of around 60 to 75 degree. It forms an acute angle. And one more thing is there at the this turning. This curvature of the turning is we call it as genu. So this is a first genu, external genu. There is one more internal genu. Where is that? It is here. That is at the lower border of pons. There is an internal genu. And the external genu, the first external genu is at the Andro superior wall of the uh, medial uh, part of the medial wall of middle ear. And here also, here there is one more ganglion is there. That is the geniculate ganglion. Okay, ganglion is sitting there. So this facial now, facial now proper will not relay. Will the uh, facial now proper relay in the ganglion? Never. It never uh, relays. It's motor root. There is no relay. It just. Um, winds around the or it curves around the uh, geniculate ganglion and it goes posteriorly backwards ok so this is the labyrinthine segment and this is called the tympanic segment it passes horizontally backwards in the medial wall of the middle ear between what is here here is the oval window so this is the oval window and what is here? It is the lateral semicircular canal. So it passes posteriorly or it passes backwards between the oval window below and the bulge of the lateral semicircular canal above. Okay, so that is the tympani segment. Then what happens after? On reach, this is the posterior wall, right? So on reaching the posterior wall, what happens? At the level of pyramid. Along with the anatomy of the uh, middle ear, we discussed about the pyramid. Remember, so it 
the pyramid is all will be almost here so at the level of pyramid the facial nerve goes downward or upward it is a downward downward course and say in the facial uh, canal itself okay so it goes a downward course at the level of pyramid it uh, curves downward so that is a second genome and that part is going through the mastoid segment so here will be your mastoid part and this segment is otherwise called the mastoid segment so meatal segment labyrinthine segment tympanic segment and the mastoid segment <coughs> so this is the intracranial uh, part this is the intratemporal part intratemporal again divided into meatal labyrinthine tympanic mastoid mastoid or the vertical tympanic or the horizontal very easy to remember and at the level of pyramid the horizontal part reaches the posterior wall it starts its downward course and one more relation in the uh, downward course is the short process of incus the short process of incus is always lateral to the facial now remember that short process of incus always lateral it comes here lateral right and another one is a pyramid then it uh, exit it has to go out of the pyramid, uh, temporal bone how it exit through which foramen here is a mastoid and here comes your styloid so which foramen comes in between which foramen is here which is the stylomastoid foramen stylomastoid foramen here is a styloid process so it comes out through the stylomastoid foramen right okay stylomastoid foramen so it leaves out through the stylomastoid foramen after exiting the first one it goes posteriorly this is the so here this is a mastoid and anteriorly is the styloid so through this this uh, part is a stylomastoid foramen so it goes a posterior branch post auricula post auricula okay first branch then it gives off two more branches what which muscle comes here the posterior belly of digastric and also stylomastoid is there so not to stylomastoid it goes to posterior belly of digastric so one mus uh, one now is to now to the posterior belly of digastric and another one is into the stylohyoid right and after that comes what is here what is situated there in front of uh, pre auricular area here is a parotid gland so it reaches the parotid gland this is your parotid gland right this is your parotid gland and in the parotid gland it gives two branches I will draw the parotid gland here. This is the parotid gland. So facial nerve gives off. On entering it gives off two branches. What is towards the temporal region. So temporofacial. Right. And another one is cervicofacial. Mind you. It gives off two branches within the uh, tissue of the uh, parotid gland. It's not the terminal branches. Facial nerve on entering into the parotid gland, it gives off a temporofacial and cervicofacial. And again, these two branches will form so many nerve plexus within the parotid gland. After that only, five terminal branches, five terminal branches are given off. The first one, I will draw a face here. Okay. Hmm. 
and this is the neck, right? So first one branch is the temporal region. So that is the temporal. It goes here. That's the temporal. Another one is to the, it's very easy to remember. So towards the temporal region goes the temporal branch. Towards the zygoma goes the zygomatic branch. And to the buckle, actually two branches, upper and lower. Upper buckle, lower buckle. Buckle. And to the mandible area goes the mandibular. And to the neck goes the cervical. Okay. That is the fate of motor root of facial now. Right? So it starts from the lower points. Exit at the pontomedullary junction at the CP angle. Along with the nervous intermediates of the sensory root. Enters into the internal acoustic canal. From the fundus starts the facial canal. Labyrinthine segment. Reaches the andro superior wall of the medial wall of middle ear. Turns around the uh, geniculate ganglion. At an angle of 60 to 75 degrees. At an acute angle goes backwards on the medial wall of the middle ear between the bulge of lateral semicircular canal and the oval window reaches the posterior wall starts its downward course at the level of uh, pyramid O one uh, nerve is given in the uh, tympanic cavity that is actually uh, to a oval window attaches the foot plate of stapes posterior crest anterior crura and the neck so uh, from the pyramid goes a muscle which attaches to the posterior uh, crest and to the posterior part of neck of uh, stapes what is that muscle it is a stepedius muscle so now to stepedius patient now gives a now to stepedius so within the middle ear, it gives one uh, motor branch which is the, uh, to the stapedius muscle. Then it exits through the stylomastoid foramen, gives the posterior auricular nerve, now to posterior valley of digastric, uh, digastric and the stylohyoid. And then the, to terminate, it reaches the parotid gland, gives off a two temporofacial and cervicofacial and form plexus in the uh, parotid gland. And gives of the five terminal branches. That is the uh, temporal, temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular and cervical. So that is about the facial now. Right? You got it? Okay. Now we, we can go to the next one. Which is that? Tears and saliva. Yeah? That is... Uh, from the superior salivatory nucleus. Fibers are going to the uh, lacrimal gland and also to the submandibular and sublingual. Okay, we can follow that.